All right, we are here with uh, Dave and Mimi and Jade, and uh, they are serving uh, the Lord in uh, the country of France uh, with international missions, and uh, it is really great to be able to interview them today. Um, uh, those of you that have been with our church for a while uh, remember Zach Anderson and the crew from Owensboro that's been up here a few times, and uh, that is the church, I believe, Dave, uh, that's the church you grew up in, is that right? So, yes, uh, you're right. so there is a there is an eerie connection, with, at least with your church, and uh, we've met Daniel, of course, and and mm -hmm. uh, so we're really excited about what God's doing uh, in your lives and uh, the new addition that God mm -hmm. blessed you with three months ago, a beautiful little girl. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, why don't you guys just uh, introduce yourselves and tell us a little bit about uh, about yourselves for uh, for a few minutes for people that may not uh, know you guys. Okay, well, I'll start. My name's, uh, well, I'm David Reeves. I'm from Owensboro, Kentucky, as Brother Daryl was saying. Um, I've been in that church since I was 12 years old, I believe, and I came to that church with a lot of questions as it comes to faith. And the, um, believe it or not, a lot of the questions I have are the ones that now I'm using to minister with. So God uh, has really brought me full circle on seeing um, seeing how there's many reasons to believe in his existence and to believe that what Jesus did um, is true and uh, that he is who he said he was. Uh, but I, I came into that church with a lot of questions at 12 years old and Pastor Tim Hall walked me through many of those questions I had and uh, really reinforced my faith. Uh, I was coming into a time of, of doubt in my life uh, whenever I was 14 to 16 years old and then through that time, um, God really uh, brought me to himself and showed me that uh, there's a world out there that desperately needs people serving. That I mean, there's countries uh, like the one we're serving in that has 1% uh, evangelical Christians in the entire country. Um, and then in, this, in the specific region we're in, you can bring that number all the way down to 0.2% of people. So to give you a little bit of... Uh, context that would be about two in ten thousand people that uh that, that know jesus as their lord and savior so basically anyone you meet is going to be a non-believer uh but god is uh brought uh god is doing some amazing things and we'll tell you about in a little bit but i want Mimi to kind of share maybe a little bit of her testimony and what what god's done through her life bringing her to himself uh, David forgot to mention, but he did eating for three years when he was uh, in, in high school, and that really gave him a, a huge heart condition. And uh, and he went on to Welsh College to pursue mission. And uh, anyway, so I'll stop there for him. <laughs> but uh, for me, it was a, a little bit of a different story. Uh, I, yeah, I grew up in a country where there were not many Christians. However, I was blessed with a, a mother that, that loved the Lord. And, uh, uh, it was it was a different kind of context in my family, to be honest. Uh, uh, when we were growing up, uh, we were not really go going to church for a lot. It was a, a difficult situation in my home at that time. And uh, I remember when I was about eight years old, my mom uh, decided, okay, this is it. We're going back to church. <laughs> and uh, we are a big family. I'm, we seven people in my family. Uh, and the only people that went with her was me and my younger sister. So it was only us three. Uh, and eventually uh, my other siblings started coming and that was with the Church of Jerry Gibbs and Barbara Gibbs, the son of their friends. And uh, eventually uh, uh, all of us children, we all got saved one after the other uh, during our teenage years. And, uh, and we're very thankful for um, the Baptist sending missionaries there uh, because my whole family got saved. Uh, my dad also came back to church, and so now we we are a serving family. Uh, all of all my siblings are serving the Lord one way or the other in the church, uh, and so it's it's really a, a great blessing to see uh, you know a one person being saved in the family going to seven people uh, loving God, and so uh, we are very very thankful that uh, Pro Baptist have been praying and sending missionary for years in France because. I'm the result of it, and I'm I'm so thankful that you know uh, I'm gonna be in heaven with my family, and uh, and that's also one of the reason I I want to do that. I want to be a missionary as well because there's a lot of need there, and um, the task is not done. <laughs> you know, there, there's a lot 
people, a lot more people to reach. And, uh, and so I eventually uh, I pursued to go to uh, college here in the US. I went to Randall University uh, because uh, one of the other missionary, Jade really wants to talk. <laughs> but but uh, one of the other missionary, uh, Dennis Teague, uh, he was very good friend of the director there and uh, they had me a pretty good scholarship, a good deal, let's say. And so uh, I was able to go to college and uh, get equipped uh, to, go, to, to go to France. That's really wh why I came. I wanted to do more quickly in ministry in France. Uh, and, uh, and then eventually it led to me uh, becoming an intern with the mission. And uh, while, while I was in college, uh, David started being interested in, um, like he wanted to start an internship. I, I got appointed a year before him, so I was technically a single missionary when I started. <laughs> but uh, whenever David finished college, um, he went to see Clint Morgan and uh, Clint told him that there was need uh, in France, Bulgaria or Spain. And uh, David went on his way and prayed about it. And, uh, I don't know, the Lord really put France on his heart. And uh, as soon as he said that to Clint, uh, Clint said, have you met Mimi yet, our single missionary? Because <laughs> David was also single at the time. So, <laughs> so anyway. Uh, that was an arranged marriage. It was totally. <laughs> we always say that. But uh, then the, he had a lot of people. He went to uh, Ivory Coast maybe two weeks after that with uh, with other people that knew me. And one of them was Joel, Joel Gibbs, uh, the oh son of Jerry God. Gibbs, which I grew up with. And uh, they were all telling you, you need to meet that girl. They, like, that would be a good match. And so it, we met, and uh, the Lord was really gracious to me. I know a lot of people, almost every church I went to, uh, so there were always uh, older, older, uh, elderly lady that would tell me, I pray that you'll find a husband. And so then God answered <laughs> those ladies' prayer whenever <laughs> David came my way. Well, we just we just had the exact same passion, uh, the exact same desire to serve in the same place, the same idea because we are pro Baptists, you know. And uh, in France, uh, obviously, there there isn't that many Christians, but uh, there is also most Christians are also Calvinists. So my my chance to find a husband in France was very low. <laughs> Honestly, I wanted to be married to somebody that. I have the same ideas and doctrine than me, so that's important to me for sure. <laughs> that's awesome. Mimi, can you tell us a little bit about what life was like as a, a teenage, uh, you got saved as a teenager, is that right? Yeah. Okay, was, so yeah. what was life like as a teenage Christian in France uh, for people that well, might not be aware yeah. of, of that culture and things? It was very different. So me and my family, we live in a really small town in between two big cities. So uh, there's an hour between those big cities. We live right in the middle. So we're 30 minutes in each direction. There's no church in between those two cities. Uh, and so you have to drive uh, 30 minutes one way or 30 minutes the other way to found the first uh, uh, Bible preaching church, you know. And so uh, in, in our, all of us, in our city, I don't believe there's an, an, another Christian family at all. Uh, and uh, honestly, around us, there's not that many. I think there was a Christian family in the city right next, but they didn't. They never went to church, and eventually, I think they kind of gave up, to be honest. But in my high school, there was there was no Christian. It was just me and my brother, or you know, uh, who, whatever siblings were with me at that time. But uh, same thing for middle school, and so at, at times it was discouraging. Uh, but, but God really blessed our family so much. Our, our family was so transformed. I really, I, I, I couldn't have denied God because I saw how much he transformed us and how much uh, we, were, we were so different because of his grace. Uh, and so I think uh, a lot of other a young Christian in France, they get very discouraged and they kind of abandon because you're the only one, you know. But in our case, it was a little different because of our family situation. Uh, and so it was difficult, but at the same time, it gave us, it, it gave me a challenge to be honest, because uh, we had to be, everybody was watching you when you're, when you're a believer, they are waiting for you to, to make a mistake. They're waiting for you to, to fail, you know? And so you really take seriously the, the, na the word ambassador. Uh, it, it's, it's a big deal. You don't want to 
you don't want to have somebody not wanting to follow Christ because of your behavior. So uh, really, you it, it, it pushes you to be serious. It pushes you to be 100% in and uh, not be a hypocrite and not, you know. Uh, and so one thing that was very, very great is I started very young. I, I asked God, God, please use me today. Use me, please. And, uh, and that was something that I think we can all do, to be honest. It's an easy prayer to do in the morning. Uh, and the God was, was kind enough to, to allow me to share my testimony and, and share my faith with my friends in high school. And uh, one of my friends got saved in middle school. And I had two friends uh, uh, getting saved in high school. And we started to do the discussion group already when I was in high school. Uh, the very first discussion group we, that was a tryout, my, my older sister Lydia asked me, uh, well, found me non-Christian, and I and I did. I got I brought three non-Christian friends, and uh, at the end of a, of that year of discussion group, one of them got saved, and so that's kind of how we started it. You know, the the discussion group that we are doing now. We uh, we did a prototype on my high school friends. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. Is that um oh is that pinch? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um. You want to talk about it, David? Um, basically, our ministry, uh, we're working with Joel and Lydie Teague. Lydie's my sister, uh, and uh, Joel is the son of, jo of uh, Dennis and Carol Teague. So Lydia is your actual biological sister? Yes, yes. So oh, I did not realize that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we okay. don't really look alike, <laughs> but we speak alike. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, yeah David, I was going to ask you, uh, and if you want to speak to, to, to your ministry there as well, but if if an American today were, were to go to where you you guys are serving in France, what what would be some of the biggest um, cultural differences that that you've noticed? Mm. Uh, Dennis Teague always kind of described it as this: that Americans were like peaches, and French people are like coconuts. This is how he kind of describes the the cultural differences between Americans and French people. And what he means by that is an American is like a peach in that. There's a really soft exterior. You can get in, but then whenever are so, people are so um, outgoing, people are so open to starting new relationships. So welcoming and welcoming, nice. <laughs> nice. Um, that they're like a peach in that it's soft to get on the outside, but then there's a pit on the inside and it's hard to get into like deep conversation, deep ideas, things like that. It's very difficult with an American. They probably only do that with very few people. Whereas a French person is like a coconut. They're very hard on the exterior. So basically breaking into that initial friendship is very difficult. But once you do, there's a soft interior and they're very quick to tell you about their, once you become friends with them, once you develop a deeper relationship, they're very more open to talking with you about deep things. And they actually want to talk to you about deep things. So that's that's one the way he kind of describes the differences between the American and uh, the French. Uh, I guess that would be more personality. It, it maybe yeah. it would just be the way they respond to deep conversation would be better. And I think French people are maybe not as friendly when you first meet them. <laughs> you know, they they might be a little quick. Uh, yeah, I feel it is an, an ungodly culture so you will found uh people get mad and you know there's there's a lot of um yeah even a lot of depression a lot of anger in people uh everywhere you go when you drive you feel like everybody's trying to kill you on the road. <laughs> <laughs> when you go to the store the, the lady that takes care of you is mad everybody's mad all the time <laughs> like, people are pretty negative sometimes but, but not always and that's that's something I like about French people is that you know what to expect from them because you can see it on their face. <laughs> you know, like, they don't hide their emotions. <laughs> they do not hide what they feel, uh, and if they're mad, you will know about it. But at the same time, uh, they they also uh, it's okay to disagree still in France. I, it might be changing, you know, uh, but people yeah. kind of like talking, arguing, saying what they think. Even like sometimes people. Uh, even say the opposite of what they think, just to see a reaction and just to have an interesting conversation for them, you know. But uh, yeah, it's but like the French people are also very. I think whenever you are friend with them, uh, you normally you will be friend for life. They are they are very uh, dear friends, and they will love you with all their heart. 
Uh, but to, to get to there, sometimes it is a big wall to break, you know. <laughs> but that's that's really what leads us into our ministry, is kind of these ideas that uh, um, there's initial there's an, an initial contact that you have to make with French people in order to uh, to minister to them. A lot of street reach type of ministry is not very effective in France. I I would love for it to be effective. But so far, we haven't seen a lot of fruit from that. But what we have seen fruit from is interacting with people on multiple occasions. Okay. And then they're, they're more open to coming to church, coming to uh, Jipons before okay. church. Okay. Jipons. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll give you the translation for it first. Jipons means I'm thinking about it in French. And that's what really leads us to our, leads us to our ministry is that uh, that initial contact that we were talking about, a lot of times it takes uh, it takes many touches before a French person will consider uh, consider God or coming to church. So our goal is to become friends with people to the point where else where they can feel comfortable coming to a Jupons event. What Jupons does is we take these big questions that people have, like if God is good, why is there so much suffering in the world? Uh, is the Bible reliable? Um, has has science disproved uh, disproved the Bible? And then to go on further, there usually towards the end we have a question of who was Jesus really? And that's really our our transition transitioning them from Jipons events to discussion groups is really what we're trying to do through that. And we have had some success with that. We've through um, through these events we've had people that say, you know what, I want to know more. I want to hear more of what you guys are talking about on these subjects and they'll sign up for a discussion group. And then the purpose of discussion groups is to get them comfortable with, uh, with Bible study. And then whenever we can get them comfortable with that, Hey, how about you come visit my church? How about you come? So there's many steps before many French people are so scared is, is the word paranoid even to walk into a church door. And that's that's the difficulty we face because of of the history that goes back a long way with uh, with Catholicism. A lot of things. There's a lot of history there that French people don't trust the church. And even though we're not Catholic, we get thrown in with the Catholics because we are the church. And because of that, um, there are many obstacles that we have. As Mimi was telling you, high school for her was basically atheist 101. They're teaching you all the reasons why you shouldn't believe in God. And there's all these walls being built up in each person's mind. So our goal is to just, through Jupons events, is to tear down those walls in people's minds so they can see Jesus for who he is yeah. and that they can follow him and know that uh, he is the only one worthy of worship and the only one who gives a gift freely, being salvation. Yeah. Amy, you mentioned... Uh... You had a few friends that came to know Jesus uh, mm -hmm. in school. Um, I would uh, I would uh, imagine that maybe part of that was seeing the difference that he had made in your life. Um, yes, um, yes, for sure, uh, and also, uh, uh, yeah, I think like a lot of people they are very desperate in France. Uh, I don't know. I was talking with a French friend the other day that lives here in the U.S., and uh, we were almost both crying because uh, we realized, you know, uh, a lot of French parents, they never say, uh, I love you to your kids. And it's a very harder culture in a way that way. And I just think like a lot, a lot of young people, they, they just are desperate to, they, they go through a lot of tough things. And I mean, here too, but uh, uh, I think like they, they really did see uh, joy in me, uh, love in me, you know, that they didn't experience at home or with other friends. Uh, and to be honest with my, with my own life, uh, I shouldn't be joyful. I shouldn't be, you know, <laughs> I should be depressed too maybe. Uh, but, but God has brought his light in me and, and, and I was different to them. And so that, that I think that do draw uh, people to Christ uh, to see that in other people. Uh, I remember, like, not that long, maybe a year and a half ago, we, I was talking with another a, a girl. She came and we had, like, a little discussion group, just me and her at home. Uh, and she was telling me, oh, but I admire you so much, you and this girl from your church and, and your sister. You guys, 
are just have it all together and we're like no we don't we're broken you don't understand we are we like what you like in us is jesus and i told her that the only thing you like about me is jesus because without him i am nothing without him i would be uh, just a broken uh a girl somewhere you know and uh and my life would not be as as great as it maybe it seems great <laughs> you know but it is the one that makes it great it is the one that brings me joy that brings me peace and uh and that helps me love people or that because otherwise i would not <laughs> honestly my my human nature would not make me do those things you know and uh but it is definitely a great a great thing and we we're really excited to be able to to work full time and uh meet people that's that's something me and David, uh, we bring to the team. We are the social people in our team, you know. <laughs> we go out and we meet as many people as we can. And, um, and uh, we, we help with a lot of things in our church plans, uh, with youth group, with kids, with all the events. We try to plan a lot of different events throughout the year, not just the evangelization big event that we do, uh, but we also have smaller events like girls' night, guys' nights, where we do like craft for girls and like sporty paintball for guys and uh we have like board games nights board games are a huge thing in france right now so we we use that and we we do it in our church building and people just a lot of random people come we put it on facebook uh we also have english night that was uh david's invention uh for a team and it was it's been great we had over 60 people showing up and uh i cook american food and he, he takes care of uh making English name, uh, in, making in English games and uh, making the night fun. And, well, yeah. that's what's kind of huge for us is because we found it difficult to invite people to church. But if we host an event in the church, yeah. it gets people in the church building and they find <laughs> out, well, this is a church. These people aren't as weird as I thought they were. Um, we're more, they, we, they came in, they come into our church and our goal is to make them feel loved to make them feel that they're cared for and to make them feel like they want to come back. And that's our, our ultimate goal in inviting people to these events. And so far, I mean, we've had people that have come to our English nights and now they're, they're coming to church. Even though we're have not having church in our building, we're having church at someone's house right now. We have someone who came to our English night who's going to our church event. So there, God's doing something and we're excited because God's moving on hearts and, uh, He's, there's a hunger for truth, and I'm praying that they find it in the only one who's the real source of it, and that's Jesus. That's awesome. Uh, I was going to ask you, David, too, uh, speak to our people and maybe other church people that are watching, you know, here in America. What are some things that we can pray with you guys about, and maybe how can we partner with you, or how can we help you guys as you... Uh, go forward um well you can pray with us because a lot of the similar similar struggles that you guys are going through right now in france with, uh, in america with covid we are going through the same things right now in france and a lot of those events i was telling you about we have 220 people that come to that event but we're doing it in a concert hall that i mean we can't hold the events right now because of covid so we've kind of are our um, our progress has kind of been held uh, held up because of this uh, because of this virus, and so what you can pray for is pray that God would uh, would eradicate it, <laughs> that God would just uh, wipe away the wipe away the virus altogether. We know He can do that. We know He has the ability. Um, pray that uh, He would take away fear. Uh, within the minds of French people that I, I don't want to come out of this and people be more scared to go to events. Mm -hmm. And that's what I really am concerned about. And you can pray that God would just continue to draw people and to continue to give that hunger for truth before fear. And that's something, you, and you can pray for Mimi and I, uh, you can pray for us uh, and Jade, uh, pray for our safety as we travel around the U.S., pray that uh, God would uh, guide us to people, to partners who are um, who want to partner with us in ministry and seeing French people reach for the kingdom. That's something you can pray with us if you would like to partner with us. Even um, that's something you can do. You can find us on the I Am Inc. Uh, dot org uh, page, 
uh, or you just type in David and Mimi Reeves and you will find our page. You'll find more about our bios, past newsletters, whatever, whatever you're looking for, you'll, you'll be able to find there. And uh, you, there's also a way you can partner with us through that. We, we also have a Facebook page. That's the best way to get our newsletters and updates. We try to post like pictures and little updates at, uh, at least once a week. Uh, so people can pray for us and our family. Uh, and that page is called uh, David and Miriam Re uh, and Mimi, sorry. David and Mimi Reeves serving in France. I can send you the link if you want, uh, brother. And uh, we, uh, we try to post, it's a private page. So we, we post like pictures of some people they can pray for and things like that. Okay. Uh, but yeah, we, we really hope to be back in France soon. We were, we were hoping to be back in August, actually. So this month has been a little, a little hard for me because, uh, you know, having your first child is a, it's a great event and uh, not being able to uh, introduce your baby to your own family. It's, it's been a little difficult for me, to be honest, uh, especially because all of my family is actually, uh, they were all at my grandma house uh, this last week. And uh, I haven't been able to meet my my brother's nephew, and he's almost a year old. And and my younger sister had a baby a month after Jay. So there's yes. two nephews I need to meet. <laughs> oh yes, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, Jade will will uh, have an advantage. She'll be able to be bilingual. Oh, for yeah. sure. <laughs> Immediately, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. She's gonna be so much better at French and English. <laughs> <laughs> what a beautiful young lady. <laughs> uh, I, I, uh, Mimi, I'd like to ask you too before we go. Um, when you first came to America, or spent mm -hmm. a lot of time in America, what what did you notice as the biggest difference from your perspective? Let me think. Uh, well, you guys are. I really like America. <laughs> <laughs> people, people are so nice here, you know, and that's something I really noticed. You are so welcoming, so. Uh, you know, so generous, so nice, like, uh, I don't think I ever spend a vacation by myself in college, you know, I was always invited at people's house in Oklahoma, I don't know how it is uh, where you are, <laughs> but in the south, <laughs> in Oklahoma, people are nice, <laughs> and uh, yeah, people kind of adopting me from, uh, from day one, like, the first, the first time I came, uh, at people I'd, I never even met, they, they bought me towels and uh, bed spread for my bed in college because they knew I couldn't bring any uh, in my suitcase. And, uh, you know, like it's, it's been incredible to see that, you know, and I'm trying to think of another differences. Let me think. Uh, I don't know. I'm not too sure right now. But, I mean, there's a lot of things, but there's also... There's also a lot of things that we have in common, you know, because we, we're not as far remote as a culture than maybe, maybe Japan or Asian culture or African culture would be, you know, because uh, European, like European and I don't know how to say that in English, you know, uh, West well, you guys used to be European at some point, you know, <laughs> so we have some in common. <laughs> yes, yes. Um. Well, I'd like to pray for you guys before Thank we you. get off of here and just ask God's blessings upon your ministry. And if you're ever in Ohio for any services, you know, we're not that far from Cleveland. Um, yeah. So we would love to have you guys come. If not this time, maybe when you come back, uh, please feel free that we have an open invitation. So Thank we'd you. love Thank to you. have you guys for a service sometime. Mm -hmm. so let me pray with you. Yes. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for David and Mimi and for Jade. and Thank you, God, for their testimony of your grace and uh, your mercy and your salvation in their life. And thank you for their desire to share that message with uh, others. Um, and thank you for the heart that they have for the French people. We ask, Lord, your blessings upon their family. We pray that uh, you might make a way for them to return back to France soon. Um, and uh, continue the ministry that you've called them to. We do pray that, that for this virus, Lord, to, to, as David said, to be eradicated, Lord. We know that you have the power to do that, and we pray that however you want to use it until that day, uh, you would help us to, to gain some things from it that would be positive, but I uh, pray that you'd use it to bring many people to yourself and um, help us as a church and as a people to be more mission-minded and more concerned for souls that need Jesus. 
And we just ask and pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, who, who, who speaks French the best? Uh, For sure. <laughs> <laughs> David does so good. He really, he really, he gets it. I don't know how to explain yeah. it, but I haven't seen many foreigners do as good as him in such a short time. He, he uses the same uh, mimics that we do. You know, French people has a lot of extra noises that we do when we speak. <laughs> We do, and we do, uh, well, uh, and he does all the dogs, like, it's so cute, I love it. Uh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the, the baby made a lot of noise, sorry about that, you guys. <laughs> so, could you share, uh, sorry, could you share, um, Maybe uh, as soon as they stop barking, I'll, I'll edit all this out, hopefully. <laughs> I was going to see if one of you could share a Bible verse or something in, in French, but the dogs oh, yeah. uh, uh, are not cooperating. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'll do that one. Oops. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead if you can. All right. Car Dieu a tant aimé le monde qu'il a donné son Fils unique, afin qu'il ne soit en lui, ne périsse point, mais qu'il ait la vie éternelle. That's John 3.16. I heard the unique, so I thought that must be it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we have some common words sometimes. Yes. <laughs> it's part of a language that you would think sometimes. There's hard things, but there's a lot of words that are the same. All the long words, like, and they finish by O-I-O-N. Uh, Connection, communication, communication, oh, all those things. The guy, William the Conqueror, moved to England, changed the entire English language to be more French friendly. Yeah. And oh. <laughs> helped us, helped us English speakers be able yes. to speak. Yeah. So if you want to come be a missionary and a, and a co-worker with us, you guys, <laughs> you, you can come. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <I'm afraid. laughs> um. Bye bye, Jade. Bye. Thank you Say so bye. much. So nice yeah. to meet you. <laughs> God, guys, uh, we'll be God. praying for your church. <laughs> God bless you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. See Have a good day. Bye -bye. You too. Bye.